There are diverse viewpoints on this. We're going to start with Max Blumenthal. He is, uh, in his own right, as you know, a crusading journalist uh, who has never been afraid to poke the bear during a time or two in what he sees as uh, injustices. Uh, Max, we're going to start with you. Would you uh, be good enough to uh, bring us up to date on uh, what's next in this situation? I mean, what are the charges? Where are the charges? How soon do we expect, if at all, that he actually will be extradited to the United States? Well, a lot of us were mocked uh, some time ago for alleging that there was a secret U.S. indictment of Julian Assange. He was assured that he'd be able to leave the embassy and just fight, face tri trial in the U.K. And now we see that the U.S. has been pulling the strings all along through its national security state that there was a secret indictment and the indictment has been unsealed. He's charged with espionage for practicing the craft of journalism and doing things that journalists in the United States and across the world do all the time, like publishing classified documents and protecting their source through the use of secure drop technology. That's all outlined in the indictment and that means that a precedent is being set here by which all journalists who publish classified information or who seek to protect sources who delete metadata or chat logs could be prosecuted by the United States. It's an attack on the First Amendment. It's attack, an attack on the craft of journalism. It's also an attack on the uh, letter of international law. In fact, uh, Theresa May is, is acting as if she is above international law. Let me bring in John Jordan. Uh, I think, John, you may have a little bit of a different perspective on this. Uh, I think Max does have a point, though, when he makes the argument that this case the United States is bringing forth against uh, uh, Julian Assange at this point does seem somewhat thin. After all, they're not saying that he did these things. They're calling this a case of conspiracy, which means he had a source uh, who he was talking to who divulged the information to him which he published. Isn't that what journalists are supposed to do? Well, I think to compare this to journalism is unfair to journalism as it's been practiced for generations. Real journalists work very hard, work multiple sources, do painstaking research um, to build a story and then present both sides to the reader. <laughs> this, that's a far cry from what this is. This is just this is computer hack, selective computer hacking, and selective and selective selective dumping of documents. I think this it cheapens the very profession of journalism to call to compare the two here. So you think he is a uh, essentially a computer hacker, uh, Max? I'm just going to let you respond to that before we got to move on to another point about what's going on with uh, Ecuador in and of itself. Go ahead, Max. Well, nothing that WikiLeaks has published has been inaccurate and much of what WikiLeaks has published has been relied upon by the Washington Post and New York Times as sourcing. I'd also point to a statement by one of the founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, who warned that U.S. elites would become like wolves preying on the poor and that the public deserved information about the machinations of that pack of wolves. And that's what Julian Assange has given to us through the sheer craft of publishing factual information. Here's what Bill Binney has to say about uh, what is going on and what the role of reporters should be in a case like this. And I'd like to get your reaction on the other side. Here it is. Most of the mainstream media already acquiesces to what the government wants them to say. This is only further evidence of how you, <clears throat> that Julian was a, a nail sticking up out of the in, information area where he was telling things that they didn't want anybody to hear, so they had to hammer him down, and and he becomes the uh, poster boy, if you will, for uh, keeping quiet and doing what you're told by all these secret governments around the world. If you agree with them, you're fine. If you don't, you get hammered. So I think uh, this is a very bad precedent, not just for in this case, but this this simply says uh, this can happen anywhere in the world. So it's a classic argument of whether he was just doing his uh, duties as a journalist or whether he had actually gone too far. But let me bring in another point, gentlemen. And this is the one that's now being uh, apparently reported somewhat widely that uh, President Moreno actually has a backdoor deal with the United States government, some are suggesting with President Trump himself, although the president up to now has denied it, that he will furnish uh, Ecuador with a deal where he's going to buy his oil and he's going to forgive his debt. And that's what really led to the release or the negotiation that arrested uh, uh, Julian Assange. Uh, let me start with you, John. What are you hearing on this, and do you buy it? 
No, I don't buy that at all. I mean, Pre President Lenin Moreno said himself what it was. It was. Uh, Assange was using the Ecuadorian embassy as a base to call to to deal with the meddle with the politics of other countries, not having to do with the United States, um, violating international norms. And here's the other thing, violating you know house protocols, which it turns out in this case he wouldn't bathe for days. He ate with his hands. He wiped food all over himself, and he smeared feces on the wall. Feces. Uh, I think the Ecuadorians had kind of had enough of it. There's no secret deal here at all. Do you think, uh, Max, that this was uh, a relationship that just uh, got uh, out of control, as some have alleged, including John? Yeah, I haven't heard anything about feces being wiped on walls, but what I do know is that this appears to be the, the outcome, the inevitable outcome of a parliamentary coup that has seen Assange's original protector, Rafael Correa, put into exile, that has seen the government of Lenin Moreno get on its knees and prostrate itself before the United States for an IMF loan in order to restructure its economy on a neoliberal basis. And that has, and that has led the Moreno government into acceding to the U.S wishes here. And in fact, what Moreno was referring to with meddling was not anything Assange was doing to any other country. It was that WikiLeaks tweeted documents that revealed Moreno's own dastardly record of corruption. And so Moreno may be understandably embarrassed here, but once again, he's violating international law by handing Assange over to possibly be extradited to a country where he could be tortured and certainly will not get a fair trial. We're almost out of time, but I just want a yes or no answer from both of you. Uh, John, I'll start with you. Yes or no, do you believe the extradition will eventually go through? I think it probably will. And in this country, Julian Assange will get a fair and public trial. Uh, Max, to you, same question. This is time for the public to mobilize to ensure that it's not because it is a violation of international law. Thank you uh, both, uh, Max uh, and John. Uh, good debate, good conversation. We thank you both. I'm Rick Sanchez. You found us on YouTube, and that's awesome. But you know what? I'm also live every night at 7 and 8 p.m. Eastern on DirecTV and DISH and cable and satellite, the RT app, oh, and Pluto TV. I'll see you there.